You probably recognize this place from last month because I'm back over in Germany and the weather conditions on this occasion are a far contrast to what they were last time because you might remember it was blazing hot sunshine throughout the, the two weeks I was on the lake. Well, the forecast for this trip, I've got 10 days ahead of me, is basically just the opposite. Gray sky, a lot of rain, and you'll probably recognize the swim that I'm in as well. I'm in exactly the same swim that I fished last time. I've managed to get back into what I consider to be my favorite swim on the lake, which is first point. There's a lot of deep water out in front of here. There's a lot more weed about at this time of the year as well. When I came here last time, it was early June, but now it's the beginning of August, and I can see just from the swim that there's a lot of top to bottom weed dotted about. It's a lot thicker out there than it was last trip, so it's gonna be very challenging fishing. I've got to use really tough gear. I've got to be on the top of my game as well, especially with the size of carp that we've got in here, because there's some real units in this venue. It is very tricky fishing as well, so every time you do hook into one of these fish, you wanna make sure you've got a good chance of getting it out. But as I say, we've got 10 days ahead of me, so let's see what unfolds during this trip. There you go, that gives you some sort of idea of what we're dealing with here because I've just reeled a rod in and that came through fairly easy. There's the, there's the hook bait in there and then the lead's there somewhere in there and yeah you've got not just this that you can see you've got all of that that's in the water as well which goes right down to there that must be 20 30 foot of weed the end of it is let me just put this down you can see there look here we go it's coming in big long strands of it must be 30 foot long I reckon there's the end of it and that's just from reeling in so when you've got a big fish on the end out there and believe me it is very weedy can't really see at the moment because it's not a very clear day I've got the drone up on a nice clear day you'd see some really big weed beds out here and they're not too far out but gives you some sort of idea what we're dealing with pretty bad stuff so you do definitely need to be on your game and you definitely do need to be fishing in the right way when you fish among stuff like that we've not got the best weather conditions for using the drone but we've got a small window and i'm going to take it up now and give you an idea of what it's like out in front so you can see me and the rods and the swim just below the drone now i'm going to take it out slowly out in front we're only allowed to use two rods and i'm following the lines out to where i'm going to be fishing and you can see already there's a lot of weed out there not too far out and that water there is about 12 13 foot in depth and you can see it's almost top to bottom and as we go further out to where i'm fishing you can still see lots of weed and we're approaching 20 foot in water now and as we approach where i'm fishing you can start to see the weed disappearing so you can see there's a lot of obstacles out there for me to overcome and how technical this fishing is going to be that's a big old carp that is and that's a massive weed bed uh, do my best to get it in if I can I currently only got a pair of pants on because I was going to go in for it. <laughs> Here's a mirror. Uh, creaking line. Hope it holds it. Need to get that weed bed off. Weed on off cause you some problems. But I'm 
won't turn it down. with a ton of weed. Oh, look at all that. That's a nice fish anyway. I thought it was a bit bigger than that because the bite was a proper big fish bite. Almost as much weed there as this fish, but uh, we got it in anyway. That's that's the main thing. Let's have a look at it on the mat. Colossal fight and a and a 50 pounder. Must have made its way into every single weed bed in front of me. But I got him out and uh, yeah, he's here now. Chucking it down with rain as well. Mega conditions, definitely a chance of another carp or two. Now I finally got a little bit of a break in the weather that I can talk to you a little bit about how I'm fishing in this situation. Now I've got to be quick because it's been raining all morning and it's due to rain anytime soon as well, but it is a nice hour at the moment, so hopefully I can get this done in one take. Now the first thing to talk about is that when you're fishing in weed like this, obviously if the fish picks up a bait and it runs into that weed, that's where you're playing catch up. So we've got to try and prevent that from happening as best we possibly can. You can see here that I've got my rods really close to where my bivvy camp is. In an ideal world, I prefer to have the rods right outside the bivvy door, but in this swim, it's very tight. There's a little bit of a step down, so I'm a couple of meters away. That's not too bad. You also see with me rods that I've not got a bait runner facility on these reels. I fish off the clutch, that's how I fish all the time. With the weed that we've got out in front, it is very thick. So if that fish picks the bait up and gets into that weed, then that's where it's gonna get difficult for me to get it out there. So if you're using a bait runner facility on your reels, then my advice is to turn that off. I fish off the clutch, and although you can still pull line off these reels at the moment, they are pretty tight. And the reason why I've not got them completely locked up is that I'm fishing for really big fish, which are very, very powerful. And in this instance, I've known people fishing locked up have their rods pulled straight into the lake. So the clutch is tight, but it's not too tight that you can't pull any line off there. So there you can see. Now I'm pulling quite hard there, and I can just about pull some line off the reels. So with me having two meters to get to the rods, Will they get pulled in? The chances are they won't. The next thing to talk about the rods is the butt rings. You'll notice that I've got the butt rings this side of the buzzer. And the reason for that is to make sure that that rod doesn't get pulled out of place because I'm fishing for some really big carp. They go over 80 pounds in this lake. And believe me, fish of that size, they really do pull. The next thing worth mentioning is the sensitivity of the buzzer. If you've got a sensitivity dial on your buzzer, then turn it up because you want to make sure that when that fish picks that bait up, you're going to get some indication. You don't want it too sensitive that you get an indication all night long and you're not really sure when you've got a bite. It's about finding a balance and I find that somewhere about halfway on the settings is perfect for this kind of situation. So that's the setup of the rods taken care of, but it doesn't matter how much attention to detail you give this subject there are times when the fish just get into the weed and there's nothing you can do about it. So what do you do when everything becomes locked up? Well, you've got to keep that pressure on, let's just say that. If you keep that pressure on, eventually the fish might start moving. If it doesn't and it remains locked up, then the next best thing is to slacken off, give the fish a bit of line, and hopefully it'll start to work its way out, and then you can get back in contact with that fish. But if all remains solid, and you're slacking off and nothing moves whatsoever, then the next thing to do is to stick the rod on the rest, turn the buzzer on, and sit back and wait and hopefully the line will start to move again and then you can get back in contact with the fish. Now I've left rods overnight and nothing has happened. I can remember fishing on East Yorkshire's Tyree Lake a few times and having fish weeded up and it's taken several hours for the fish to get out. So the important thing to take from this is that if you've got a carp weeded up, then don't be impatient about it. Having patience is always gonna work in your favor. If you're impatient and you sit there tugging away at the line, eventually what's gonna happen is you're gonna lose that fish. So sit back, 
be patient and hopefully that fish will work its way out. Just having a little walk around with the dog on a daily exercise and I thought I'd show you this end of the lake. Not really fish these swims down here but these are absolutely lovely. But just stand back a little bit you can see there's the front of the swim and the features on this side of the lake are just to fish really close in almost under your rod tips where it really drops off. There's actually a few swims on the, the far bank over there where it drops off as well and you're just fishing right under the rod tips but these reeds are a really special feature on this lake and I remember seeing years ago a photograph of Marcus Peltzer holding a massive cart with these reed beds in the background and thinking oh, I'd love to get a photograph with those and I've since done it I've had a few fish with the reeds in the background but they are a definite lovely feature on this lake there's some really thick reed beds especially on this side that run all the way along here I'll have a look through there in a minute show you but you can see all the way along this margin down here that they really do overhang and it's no wonder the carp get into the, the margins because they're a, an area where you don't see anglers you don't see any any disturbance and they're perfect for the carp to hide away in but let's have a walk down here into the next swim and you can just see how thick these reed beds are and they're really big as well they must be I don't know 12 foot tall something like that but they're almost like cane they're that thick now you don't get any problems with fish getting into them because they tend to be really close in they don't tend to sit too far out in the water so they don't cause you any problems but if they did I can assure you they'd cause you loads of problems with your gear because you can see there just how thick they are almost like bamboo or thick cane but they are a lovely species of reed I don't know of any lakes in England that have got them I've seen them on quite a few lakes in Germany and Austria and um, as I say they're a lovely lovely feature there's the lake that we've just been looking at from that swim down there and I'll just show you this swim in here which is a little bit quiet as well this side of the lake definitely seems to be a little bit quieter than the other side there you go a grim grey wet old day anyway let's get back to the swim and get the rods out Just look at the size of that weed bed that I've got on the end of this rod. It's absolutely huge. I've no idea if there's a fish still on there, but what I can tell you is the gear's been strong enough to, to pull all this weed in. <laughs> and that in itself is a kind of result. I'm hoping there's a fish still there, but I don't think there is. I think it's long gone. But you never know. It doesn't feel like it's there anything there, and there isn't. There's a rig there. Ah, oh dear. Yeah, you win some, you lose some. But I think I've got the biggest problem in this swim out of the way which is all this weed <sighs> dear. let's clear it while I can uh. 
oh dear it's never nice losing fish oh. but at least if I can get all this in I've certainly helped the swim somewhat at least the fish is safe anyway it's not stuck in a weed bed I've managed to get the rig back and it looks all right as well so I spent about 40 minutes trying to get that fish out of there <laughs> so I'm a bit guided but never mind that's fishing next bite could be a monster look at this weed just look at all that oh, it's just crazy this is why this lake has got so many big carp in it because you've got all this kind of food and sort of safety for the fish they love it in the weed like this Well, I'm not doing too bad anyway. I've, I've landed six fish and lost two, so the statistics ain't that bad. Well, I think I've probably got rid of the worst obstacle in the swim. Oh, oh look. Although I don't think I'll have any energy to land any fish, to be honest with you, because I'm wrecked. Right, let's get dry and get the rods, or well, that rod, redone. So you need to step your gear up when fishing in weed like we've got today and it's fair to say that a lot of UK anglers like using small hooks and fine hook links and whilst these may get you a few more bites they won't get you any of the fish in definitely in this kind of situation the same with fine mainline too you need to beef things up by using big hooks and strong lines and you need to get rid of that lead so it needs to be only lightly clipped into place today I'm using 18 pound camo outline with three rod lengths of shock tight leader I'm even using the shock tight as a hook link because it's very supple and ideal for this kind of situation I've got size 2 snag hooks on and whilst these might sacrifice me a few bites on a heavily fish water like this I know they've more chance of staying in and definitely we've stand in a good hard battle in the weed. It's all about putting the odds in your favour when fishing in thick weed like this. There's very little margin for error. You need reliable gear that's been well field tested and is strong enough for the job. once been in control of this fish. That's a good one and all. Uh, oh yeah mate. It's going again. What a 
performance this has been. moment very powerful fish 45 pounds and a proper good fight as well probably 45 minutes went through my other rod picked up the line in and out of weed beds into a snag tough gear persistence has paid off lovely old carp 